Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike and this is a Robert Oster ink. It's a drink for your pen and I have not reviewed a Robert Oster ink in a while it feels like. I don't know why. I just kind of worked out that way. This is Scorpion, which is a Pen Chalet exclusive. And as soon as I saw this one, I kind of knew I had to have it. A friend of mine was ordering a bunch of stuff from Pen Chalet, and she was going to go to uh, Pen, pen Show. So she bought me a bottle and brought it to the Pen Show to save shipping. So thank you very much to my friend. This is, as you can see there, sort of a golden brown. Really nice. Now, sometimes golden browns and that sort of thing from Robert Oster have been, in my experience, a bit on the dry side. This one is not. This one is straight up medium, I think. It flows really nicely. Uh, it has all these all these colors in it. You've got yellows and like some browns. They say there's a bit of orange, and I think I see a little bit of orange in here as well, but not a whole lot. So I wouldn't count on this being an orange. This is my Rodeo 80 grams per square meter paper. Flow is medium. Performance pretty good on copy paper. We'll take a look at that here in a few minutes. Qualities, it's got some shading. You're going to see a lot of shading here. The pen, spoke axle with a medium Yovo nib. The spoke axle is one I reviewed not too long ago. This is a very nice medium Yovo nib. They're pretty much middle of the road, these uh, medium nibs. And uh, so they're not wet, not dry. And this ink has complemented it very well. Now you'll see down here in the comments section that it starts out very, very dark. And that's because when I was writing this, I was just sort of letting this sit there on the table and like it got a little bit dried out in the nib. It didn't skip interestingly, but it did start out very dark and then sort of fades into what the color really is. That'll happen if you leave your pen just sitting out there uncapped. <laughs> I just sort of let it sit there. I don't, I don't know why I just you know sometimes people do things so uh, the comment section I took this from the pen chalet marketing copy says this medium light yellow brown ink shows dark orange at very high saturation this behavior is absolutely appropriate or uh, wait appropriate as I had a little bit of a skip there I must have lifted it from the paper absolutely appropriate as the ink pulled its ink its inspiration from the bark scorpions of the Arizona desert they are known to be yellow tan or orange but at high elevations may exhibit dark stripes and you get some of all that stuff in here except for maybe the orange which I don't really see in this this is just a medium nib maybe if I was using something very very wet you'd see orange but I don't know these come in 50 mil bottles you can only get it at pen chalet and they're 18 bucks a piece which is you know typical price for this kind of ink okay let's do our water drop test take a look at chromatographies and comparable inks and some different papers we have to use a bigger syringe i've been using this one mil for a little while and it's kind of small i usually want a little bit more water whoa 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 let's not get crazy there we go okay Okay. All right. So it's uh, sort of swirling there. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see what this has left when we when we mop it up. So we're getting a lot of yellow at the top, which is interesting. All right. So what's left over? Mm, not much of anything. If you spill your water or whatever on this, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it. And if you spill your coffee on this, what's left is kind of the same as the coffee stains I have here on the side of my notebook where I spilled coffee all over it a long time ago. So yeah, if you spill your coffee on this, it's done. That is 86, it's gone. This is what the chromatography looks like. And this is a very interesting chromatography. There's nothing left down here, which should have tipped me off. But look at all this pink and orange and, and green and so many colors in this chromatography. Who would have known you'd get this out of all this? Wild, right? Okay. On my usual Staples 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper, it looks nice. No feathers here that I can see, no real spread of any kind. On the back, just a couple little dots coming through, uh, you know, here and there. That's very good for this paper. You can actually see the badness of this paper. Like, look at these, like, streaks. It's just not a good, not a good cop, not a good paper. It's not made for liquid ink, man. It's made for, I don't know, printer toner or something. But not, that said, this works very well on there, and that's impressive. Next up, Domtar 28. I got this from Blank Slate Paper Company. Link in the description. You can go there and make your own lines and dots and whatever you like there. And as you can see here, it started out a little bit light up here. I think, again, I just kind of let my pen just sit there and uh, I didn't really want to put down ink for a second. By the time I got through the, the word transformers though, it was ready to go. This is all just transcribed from the 99% Invisible City by Roman Mars and Kurt Kolstedt. I've been really enjoying transcribing this book. Uh, this is all about, um, you know, how they hid electrical substations in neighborhoods and made them look like houses. Sounds really cool. So 
Yeah, I dig it. And this ink looks really good on this paper. This paper has a slight yellowish cast. You can tell when I put a bright white next to it. This is a little bit on the yellow side, although not much. And uh, it just really, just really looks nice on this paper and behaves itself perfectly well, no problems. Next up, Wheat Straw Paper in a Curly Inked Inky Fingers uh, book. And uh, this is sort of analogous to a sugarcane paper, I would say. It looks great on this paper. Look at the color. This is just a beautiful honey color on here. I think it looks better on here than it does on the Domtar. Although, it, like, I don't know, it's fairly close. But, man, it looks really good on this paper. So, very, very nice. Next up, Galen Leather Everyday Book. This is, uh, this is Tomoe River Paper. Here is the, the swatch. Again, a more honey color than you get from some other papers, but uh, looks it looks pretty good. I think it's still best. I think it's still best on this one. I don't know, let's compare them. Uh, yeah, I think it looks best on here. I mean, this is good too, but it looks best on the wheat straw. Wheat straw paper, if you can find it, grab it. Okay, color comparisons. These are my Colodex cards, link in the description for those cards. These are my standard for doing ink swatches. This is that Scorpion from Robert Oster and Pinchelet, and I think it looks really nice on here. Look at all these shades, really good. Here's Franklin Christoph Honeycomb, which is, uh, I really like Honeycomb. I haven't used it in a while, but every time I look at a swatch, I'm like, yeah, I gotta put that back in a pen. It's more of a brown than Scorpion. Some of these tones and some of these tones are mirrored. Like it looks a lot like this up here, I would say. But overall, Scorpion is a bit lighter than Honeycomb, although both do really nice shading. Then we have uh, Robert Oster, Cities of America. This is Kansas City, which has sort of a green cast to it. Very interesting comparison there. Then we have Leonardo's Sepia Classico, which also I don't think is sepia, but like whatever, uh, which is more of a honey color than this, which tends a little bit more yellower. Interesting, interesting sorts of colors. I uh, I don't know which one I like. I don't know which one I like most. These are all these are all very cool. Then let's look at this one. This is Colorverse String, which I think is a very close to Scorpion from Robert Oster. And then Robert Oster's Cafe Crema, which is way darker. If you're looking at this, you're like, man, Mike, I like this kind of color space, but that's too light. I don't want to write with that kind of color. Check out Cafe Crema because Cafe Crema is. That's that's got cool colors in it and cool color variation and definitely worth checking out if you can find that. This is a little bit on the dry side. Put it in a wetter nib, but it looks dope. All right. And lastly, I think the closest is this one. This is Sailor with Tintirius, which is homemade tortillas. I got this from a friend Kimberly's little sample I got. They they sold out of this almost immediately. You won't be able to find this one. But if you were like, oh, man, I missed out on homemade tortillas, get some scorpion it's very, very, very close. This one gets a little bit darker, I think, than the Sailor does. But, I mean, look at these colors. Look at that. Look at these up here. So close. This is a little bit darker. This is a little bit yellower. Still totally readable. Uh, I think uh, this is a good good replacement perhaps for homemade tortillas because you can't get that and I can't even get a bottle of it. So, so there you go. All right. Thanks very much for watching this little scorpion, scorpion video here. Uh, does it sting? No, this is a very nice ink and, and I dig it. So go find this at Pinchlay. Tell them I sent you and that I said, hi, I'll see you. Uh, uh, you'll see me in another video very, very soon. I'm trying to break myself of that habit. I'm not going to see you. You can see me. It's uh, one way. It's video. I'm not watching you. All right. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, peace out.